welcome to Agenda Edina, a program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. Minnehaha is a popular name in the Twin Cities metro area. Many are familiar with the Minnehaha Parkway, Minnehaha Regional Park, Minnehaha Falls, and the Minnehaha neighborhood in Minneapolis. It translates to waterfall or rapid water in Dakota. Outside of the metro area, you will find several instances of Minnewawa, including the city of Minnewawa and Lake Minnewawa in Aiken County. But did you know there was once a Minnewawa Avenue in Edina? Prior to the expansion of Minnesota Highway 100 in the early 1970s, Minnewawa Avenue was located east of the highway in between Eden Avenue and West 50th Street. Archival records indicate that the Minnesota Department of Highways, now called MnDOT, assembled and acquired the land needed for the highway expansion through eminent domain. Minnewawa Avenue was removed during the construction of the northbound on and off ramp sometime between 1971 and 1974. City staff, MnDOT staff, and land surveyors have found references to the vacation or public's right to use the road, but unable to find a recorded copy of the formal documentation. To resolve the matter and allow for a clean legal description of the land prepared, the City Council earlier this month adopted a resolution vacating the right-of-way easement that runs through Tupa Park. But we never found a legal recorded document. so. It was recommended to go back in front of council, reaffirm the, the vacation we knew existed that we just didn't have documentation for. And a final note, Minnewawa is Sioux for laughing water or Ojibwe for make a good sound. Close to 4,000 students walk the halls of Valley View Middle and Edina High School. On any day of the week, you'll find the city's two school resource officers there as well. Their work of helping to keep schools safe also includes time for fun. Edina TV shows us how socializing and safety go hand in hand. 8 a.m. can feel early for these Valley View Middle School students. All right! But they're awake preparing for an important day of testing. MCAs, that means no advisory, no flex. You're going straight to your testing site. Uh, this before school program is called Hornet Central. One, two, three, go! And it's not only for studying. That was a nice kick. And on this day, Got it. it's not only for students. Kids get a chance to have some fun, burn some energy before going to class for the whole day. Joining them is school resource officer, Kyle Waterstreet. How often do you get to throw dodgeballs at a cop? This is Officer Water Street's second year in a position where safety and security are top priorities. But so is spending time like this with students. I look at it as a way to try to build relationships with students. And if you can build those positive relationships and get them strong nice and early, the chance of having to deal with a student, at least in my mind, on a negative aspect is less. The city has two school resource officers, also called SROs. Joseph Deligahausen is assigned to the high school. Together, they're an integral part of the school district's safety and security plan. When a crisis does come up, and inevitably in public schools that does happen, uh, they are our direct connection to um, the police department. Superintendent Dr. Stacy Stanley says those one-on-one -on -one relationships are tied to safety. You know, hear kids all the time talking about Officer Joe and just how important he is, or Officer Kyle and how they're able to talk to him. And um, that just plays a significant role as kids are out in the community. In the event anything does happen in the future, um, those relationships are established and there's a sense of trust. Trust built on daily conversations and fist bumps. I wanted to get into the position because I want to make connections. I want to try to help uh, kids when they're maybe a little bit younger in terms of trying to make good decisions. When students already have a lot in their minds, they know school resource officers are never far away. They allow our staff and our kids to feel safe. Oftentimes when you um, ask students whether or not they want SROs in the schools, the students will tell us that they do. At Valley View Middle School, I'm Dan Carpenter for Adina TV. 
The police department offers the school resource officer assignment as a rotating position. The term can last between three and four years, depending on the needs of the school district and police department. Construction of a new fire station too officially kicked off with a recent groundbreaking ceremony. This is another important community investment that we're making as a city. The city purchased 4401 West 76th Street to construct a new fire station, which will also include space for the department's public health division on the northern third of the site. The new fire station will replace the one on York Avenue, which is too small to meet the community's needs. The fire department has the divisions of the building inspection division, public health division, our fire operations, which includes an ambulance service, and the South Metro Public Safety Training Facility. This station will house our public health division. Uh, it's the first time the, the, the needs of our community and the public will, will be able to be addressed from the public health aspect with staff that they can see face to face right here out of fire station two. One, two, three. <laughs> The City Council, Fire Department staff, Department Directors, and members of the construction team ceremoniously threw dirt at the soggy celebration to mark the start of construction of the project, which begins in earnest this month. We're super excited about uh, this project with the City of Edina. Um, it's going to have a great features for the community, lots of community space, uh, lots of sustainability as well built into the project. That's, that's really going to be a great um, asset for the community and, and everybody in it. Construction is expected to be complete in late 2025. Earlier this month, the City Council also approved the $71,000 purchase of 18 larger diameter trees for the site, which is completely vacant. Trees vary in size from 4 and 3 quarters inch white oak to an 8 inch regal prince oak. Dozens of smaller diameter trees, shrubs, and native plantings are included under a separate contract. Thank you for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.